you made a really cool Google activity. Now what? This is a question I have been getting quite a bit since I posted a few different Google Slides tutorials on how to do um, different activities like making games and making interactive projects for kids. And people kept saying, but now what? So I thought we would do a video all about the but now what? If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share. All right, so for this video, I'm gonna assume that you've already created an online digital activity or a Google activity is really what I'm focusing on when I say digital. If not, I will link below. I have a free webinar that goes through like exactly how to do all the different things. It's really, really informative and free again. So check that out down below but we're gonna kind of assume that you've already done that. So we're gonna take this two different approaches. First, we're gonna talk about what to do as a teacher, and then we're gonna talk about what to do as a teacher's pay teacher's author. So here we go. If you are a teacher and you created a really cool Google assignment, then you need to, first of all, send it to your kiddos. Yeah. That's it. So I personally used Google Classroom at the end of last year and will probably continue to use it in the future. And it just makes it super, 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 super easy to assign things to your kids, especially from the Google Suite, because it will actually automatically link to your Google Drive to make it super, super easy to find things. So in Google Classroom, you would go to add assignment and then you can go down below to the drop down and you can add different things to the assignments. So you can create a new activity or you can add one from your Google Drive, which is really thinking awesome. When you do this, there's gonna be a few different options of what you can do. So you can either let your kids just view the file, you can let them edit the file, or you can have Google Classroom make a copy for each student. So. If you're doing something where they need to type anything, I would say make a copy for each student. If you let them just edit the original file, then they can all edit the same thing and it's gonna be chaos. If you click view only, then they can only view. I have actually done this for a few of my lessons. All of the game-like lessons, I will link down below so that you know what I'm talking about to a video that talks about those, um, where all you're doing is clicking on the buttons then you can do a view only. But if they have to type anything, you want it to be make a copy for each student. So when you assign an assignment in Google Classroom, then you just basically click assign and give it a due date. And then when the kids finish it, actually you can see it while they're working on it, which is super cool. And then when they finish, they'll just click turn in and then you can see exactly what they have turned in and what they have done. Now, if you do not have a Google Classroom, you can still send Google activities to your kids. It's just gonna be a lot more cumbersome. So what you would wanna do is get the shareable link and you're going to force a copy. So what that means is that at the end of the link where it says slash view or slash whatever, you're going to get rid of where it says view or get rid of where it says edit and you're gonna write copy. And that is going to make it so that each student gets their own copy. And then you would want them to just send that back to you and probably have them put their name somewhere in it so that you know exactly whose it is. I would suggest a Google Classroom because it just makes life very easy, but if you don't wanna go that route, whatever, that's fine. Now, if you are a TPT author who is wondering, okay, I made a Google product, now what do I do? It's not as difficult as it sounds. It does not matter what your sharing settings are. It doesn't matter anything. All you have to do is go to Teachers Pay Teachers, click on add a new product, and then click on a Google product. It will connect you to your Google Drive account where you click on which product you want to use. When someone buys it, they will get a copy of it. So they do not have to touch yours. They're not touching anything of yours. They're not editing yours. They are getting their own copy that they can do whatever they want with to better help their students. So you don't need to worry about share settings. You don't need to worry about forcing a copy. If you're putting it on Teachers Pay Teachers, all you need to do is go to connect it to your Google Drive and then you just click on the product. You do, however, need to make sure that you do not delete the product because that can mess up people getting it. And you also need to make sure that if you 
want to edit something just for your kiddos that you make your own copies so that you don't mess with the one that is there. All right, so I hope that helps with some of your questions about the Google products. I know it's kind of weird. Again, if you want to make your own Google product, like a activity for your kids to do or to put on Teachers Pay Teachers, you can click the link down below to get to the free free creating online resources webinar and check out exactly how I make my Google Slides activities for the kiddos to use and not mess with the things I don't want them to mess with or copy and paste my clip art because that is not okay with my clip art. So check the link down below for that. Thank you so much for watching. Leave any more questions I didn't answer down below as you usually do, which is how we got to this video. And yeah, have a wonderful, wonderful week.